proudly we hail. From New York City, where the American stage begins, here is another program with a cast of outstanding players. Public service time has been made available by this station for your Army and your Air Force to bring you this story as proudly we hail Major Dana Stacy, U.S. Air Force. The story is entitled, The Old Pro. The story of a daring jet fighter pilot, as proudly we hail Major Dana Stacy of the U.S. Air Force and all the officers and men of the 25th Fighter Interceptor Squadron and the 51st Fighter Interceptor Group. Our first act curtain will rise in just a moment, but first, young man, take your place in the new jet age as an Air Force aviation cadet. You'll get 18 months of intensive training, learn all about jet operation, and you'll be surprised how easy jets are to fly and how safe, too. Aviation cadets graduate as Air Force lieutenants with earnings of over $5,000 a year. To qualify, you must be between the ages of 19 and 26 and a half, single, and have at least two years of college. Visit your nearest United States Army and United States Air Force recruiting station for details. And now your Army and your Air Force present the proudly we hail production, The Old Pro. A jet fighter interceptor pilot. Your name is Major Dana Stacy. You're called back to your squadron in South Korea after rest and recuperation leave in Tokyo. A leave that was cut in half because your squadron wanted you back fast. Something big in the wind. So you look out the window of the C-47 down at the dark blue flatness of the Sea of Japan below. And you talk to the war correspondent Kogan on the bucket seat next to you. And then you doze off, dreaming of the leave you didn't finish until you feel a hand shake you. Major. Yeah? Major Stacy, yeah. wake up. What? What's the matter? We're almost at the field. Oh? Thought you'd want to know. Oh, yeah, 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 so we are. Supposed to fasten safety belts. Yeah, right. Hey, you were really pounding your ear. Yeah, dreaming beautiful dreams, Kogan. About a leave in Tokyo I didn't get to finish. Tough. Say, uh, what do you suppose your squadron's got scheduled they need you back in such a rush? How long have you been a war correspondent, Kogan? About a year. Why? Well, then you ought to know I couldn't tell you even if I knew. I'm sorry. How long have you been in the service, Major? Uh, since 42. Not counting a few years as a civilian after the big war. And uh, you ought to be used to these things happening. <laughs> yeah, you're right, Kogan. I'm sorry I blew my top. Ah, uh, you didn't exactly flip. Uh, it's just that after you've been at it for a while, getting back to your squadron isn't the kick it used to be. How old are you, Major? Twenty-nine. <laughs> a real old-timer. The kind they call the old pros, huh? Yeah, that's what these buck lieutenants call us. Flew in the last war? Yeah, yeah. Italy, 15th Air Force, P-51s. <laughs> I used to think they were hot ships. I oh, say, uh, we're about to land. Any minute. We're in the landing pattern now. What made you come back in, Major? Didn't like civilian life? Oh, I guess you've heard all the standard answers to that one. But for me, once you've flown a combat ship, nothing else is quite enough. I wanted to climb into a jet and see what made it tick. Huh? Yeah, something like that. All I needed was a reason. And this Korea business? That was the reason I needed... What's this all about, Colonel Payton? You'll get brief, but I can tell you this much now. Tomorrow we're going to clobber a new red airfield, this side of the Yalu. Oh, a maximum effort by the group, huh? Yep. Hey, what's that? Huh? Hey, looks like someone's in trouble. Spot him, Stace? Yeah. yeah there he is, Jeff, that F-86 on the approach to runway 17. What's the matter with him? He's coming in dead stick. Well, isn't he coming in too steep? He's got to. He needs the speed. Yeah, he's leveling off now. He's got the runway made. All right, easy boy, level those wings. 
That's it. That's it. Now just pull her back. A little. That's it. Now put her down. Okay. Whew. Thought for a minute he was going to undershoot it. Yeah. We need that boy in his plane for tomorrow. Man, that is one devil of a sight. Yeah, you were sweating. Think about that boy. They come in dead stick like that very often? Whenever it happens, it's too often. Must be some trick to make a landing like that. Well, without any power, you only get one shot at the runway. And uh, if they foul up? They usually don't. They can't. Ever make a dead stick landing in a jet, Major? Not yet, Kogan. And I'd just as soon put it off for a while. How's that for a meal, Dana? Better than that sukiyaki? Yeah, yeah, except the sukiyaki's in Tokyo. Another six weeks and we'll hit Japan together, eh, boy? Oh, good deal. Say, meanwhile, clue me in on tomorrow's mission, will you? Yeah. Well, it's strictly max effort. And with everything we've got against everything they've got. Ah. Hey, uh, Lieutenant Simmons. Yes, Colonel? Tell Major Stacy here what happened to your flight yesterday. Man, that was some hairy old dog fight. What happened? Well, there were these eight MiGs in a ragged formation, sure. like when the new boys, you know, first trip out. Uh -huh. So we tore into them. Yeah. Turned out they were anything but new. They fought us down to the deck and back up again, using every trick in the book. Mm. Man, it was rough. Toxin rough. You heard what I mean, Stace? Oh, excuse me. The old man's waving. Yeah. Yes, sir. But uh, next time I see one of those jokers, I won't be caught with my flaps down. I'll clobber him for sure. Yeah. Lieutenant, you're sure one uh, fire-eating flyboy, aren't well, you? Well, I don't have to be a World War II vet to know I can bounce a jet around the sky as well as anyone. And I mean anyone. Uh -huh. A real hot pilot, huh? No one ever got on my tail, including combat instructors, except one MiG. And he didn't stay there long. Well, kid, you got a lot to learn. Don't you know there's always someone somewhere who can outfly you? No one in this man's squadron, including the fellas with World War II air medals and DFCs. Old pros. Old schmoes. Well, we may be old schmoes, buddy, but we learn how to fly wing first. Meaning what? Meaning when you left your leader's wing last month to go after a MiG. O'Hara told you, huh? Yeah, and more. How he had to jeopardize his entire flight to save your neck when another flight of MiGs bounced you. I'm not the only one who's done that. Look, Summers, the minute you left O'Hara's wing, you jeopardized the life of a guy who was depending on you. And the quicker you learn that a wingman is supposed to fly wing to protect his leader and himself, the better off we'll all be. And I'll tell you this, buddy. You ever leave my wing, I'll see you court-martialed. I'm not planning to fly your wing, Major. Well, I hope you don't. You'd really get a workout. Are you kidding? <laughs> Flying wing on a cautious old pro is the safest work there is. That's good duty. The old man wanted to know how many airplanes we'll have in commission. Uh -huh. Well, did you get Major Stacy to hear the word, Lieutenant? The ungarbled word, Colonel. The straight cadet school poop. The lieutenant doesn't know it, Jeff, but someone's going to fix his wagon one of these days, in the air or on the deck. Hey, anything wrong here? No, no, no. <clears throat> well, are you leaving, lieutenant? <laughs> yes, sir. Right away, sir. Good night, sir. Major, sir. Colonel. Hey, what's that all about, Stacy? Oh, these smart buck lieutenants. What makes these kids so almighty cocky? <laughs> Stace, ten years ago, we were the same way. And you were worse than any of us. <laughs> Yeah, I guess you're right. Well, I'll see you in the morning. Right. In the ready room at the briefing. Jeff! Right. Look at that flight board. Well, what's up, Stace? Well, uh, well, I'm still leading a flight, but look who's on my wing. Oh, that kid's summer, yeah? Not my doing, Stace. Uh, but this summer's, Jeff. I have no use for him, nor he for me. Sorry, buddy. Really, I am, but he's your wingman today. As Colonel Vargas just pointed out, moving into this new field at Kawang Po, this side of the Yalus, part of the Reds try for air supremacy. Uh, Our fighter Jeff, bomber the the new program is setting up fast. Pain. <laughs> New field will Come bring in, them 100 Japan. miles well, closer than their nest briefing? across the river. Almost. And but he's sharp. And uh, once they set up shop, it'll be rough rooting them out of there. So today, we've got to stop them. All that's going to stop the 800 or so MiGs that they throw against us is our 150 Sabres flying top cover for the fighter bombers. <coughs> now, Major Stacy? Uh, yeah, back here. Call sign for your flight will be doctor. Right. right. The station will be 40,000 feet. 
Right about here. See where I'm pointing on a map? Near the bend of the river, just west of Kawung Po. Grid coordinates are Uncle Roger 2170. Got it? Yeah, Angels 40, Uncle Roger 2170. Got it. Take off time for Dr. Flight 0900. You'll see your in and out courses here on the map. Don't forget to check Operational Control Center, Punch Drunk, before you cross the bomb line, and Control Ship Blackjack after you're across. Now, Captain Romaine, your flight will follow the Colonel's flight. <laughs> You're strapped in the cockpit of your F-86 Sabrejet now, home. Your earphones are plugged into the radio and your oxygen mask fits tightly over your face. Your jet engine is idling impatiently behind you and you're ready to leave. You glance at the others in your flight, then you call the tower. Tower, this is Dr. Flight with four patients. Taxi and takeoff instructions, please. Doctor, this is Tower. Clear to runway 17. Altimeter 29.92. Wind south, southeast at one five. Roger, tower, and out. So you swing out to the taxiway, your flight strung out behind you in single file. Up ahead, you see a leader and his wingman rushing down the runway in a twin, snorting tail up charge, lifting eagerly into the air, then climbing sharply away in beautifully paired precision. Suddenly, they are silhouettes, and you are ready for takeoff. You glance at Summers, and he's right at your wingtip. Tower, this is Doctor. Are we clear to roll? Cleared for takeoff, Doctor. You slowly open the throttle, holding the brakes as hard as you can. Then release the brakes and feel a slam of power as you're banged back into your seat. And now you're rolling, gradually picking up speed, seeing Summers out of the corner of your eye, almost abreast of you off your wing. Then your controls take hold as the airspeed indicator rises, and you pull back on the stick and you're airborne. You trim for a long, straight climb and wait for your other two boys taking off 30 seconds behind you to join up. You're at 40,000 feet now, heading north, the four of you in a tight, shiny V with you at the head. You're approaching the bomb line, a red, jagged line on your map that separates UN forces from the commies. So you contact the operational control center. Punch Drunk, this is Doctor. How do you read me? Over. Doctor, this is Punch Drunk. Read you loud and clear. Over. Punch Drunk, this is Doctor with four patients heading north. Over. Roger, Doctor. And out. Now you've punched in for work. And when you put in your time, as long as your fuel lasts, you'll punch out on the way home. You look off your right wing tip at Summers. He's still in there close. Ahead, Mig Alley. No man's land. You're smack in the middle of it. 40,000 feet, Mig altitude. Below, the broad mouth of the Yalu River empties into the Yellow Sea. Far off on the horizon across the river is Antung, the MiG's biggest nest. Time to call into the control ship. Blackjack, this is Doctor. How do you read me? Over. Doctor, this is Blackjack. Read you five by five. Over. Blackjack, am on station at Angels 40. Standing by. Over. Roger, Doctor. And out. Standing by. Waiting for MiGs. Waiting for Blackjack to tell you radars picked up MiG bandits heading your way. Staring into the sky, waiting for one telltale gleam of silver. Knowing their radar has picked you up by now. And the fighter bombers who are now winging into plaster Kawangpo Field. Waiting. Doctor, this is Blackjack. Over. Go ahead, Blackjack. Enemy aircraft departing station. Roger, Blackjack. And out. So you call your boys. Doctor Flight, they're on their way. Keep your eyes peeled. They'll be above us. Roger, Doctor. Roger, Doctor. Roger, Doctor. And five minutes later... Or is it five seconds later? Doctor, this is Blackjack. Bandits, three o'clock high. Three o'clock high. Roger, Blackjack. Radar tells Blackjack which way you're pointed and that the MiGs are above you to your right. But Radar can't get in the cockpit and spot them for you, so you have to eyeball it yourself. Eight pairs of eyes are riveted on three o'clock high when... Tally-ho, bandits, three o'clock, very high. Eight of them, Doctor. Blackjack, we have bandits in sight. Out. They're starting their run. Turn into them, Dr. Flight. Here we go, flyboy. Turning now. Stick close. Doctor, this is Blackjack. More enemy aircraft departing station. You are listening to the proudly beheld production, The Old Pro. We'll return in just a moment for the second act. College men, you can learn to fly the latest and fastest jets easily and safely as an Air Force aviation cadet. 
Aviation cadets get 18 months of tough, concentrated jet training, leading to a lieutenant's commission in the Air Force and earnings of more than $5,000 a year. Your future is unlimited. To qualify, you must be between the ages of 19 and 26 and a half, single, and have at least two years of college. Visit your local United States Army and United States Air Force recruiting station now. You are listening to Proudly We Hail, and now we present the second act of The Old Pro. This is it, a dogfight. Not a one-pass brush with the Reds running for cover, but a big old hairy dogfight. Your formation meshes with theirs, closing at 1,000 miles per hour. And you answer the red winking cannons from their noses with your 50s. And then suddenly you're through their formation, turning sharply to avoid a collision, twisting to get another bandit in your sights for a split second. And then rocking your ship around in a seat-heavy stomach-pulling turn, ready for the next pass. Still with you, Doctor. Let's go get him. Doctor 3, where are you? Bandit, 9 o'clock. Busy over here. Doctor can't rejoin you. Doctor, this is Blackjack. Enemy aircraft departing station. And now the sky is full of twisting, turning, rolling, screaming, hammering planes, yours and theirs. Could be every man for himself, but Summers hangs on to you. Lone wolf below, Doctor, shall we? Negative. Bandit's coming in at six. Diving with you. Let these new boys make their pass, then we'll go help Tyner. Read me? Roger, Doctor. Here we go. And this new flight of MiGs barrels in another eight sleek cannon platforms, pouring hot embers at you as you turn sharply into them. And then you break loose. Tyner, where are you? Have him in sight, Doctor. Three o'clock, low, alone. Doctor Three, get on up here, fast. Looking for four, he's gone. Doctor, he's got trouble on his tail, two of them. Breaking down fast to help him. Stick, Summers. With you. All right, over on you. Back and down. There, stay in the sights, big boy. You got him, Doctor. Oh, toxin, thanks, Doctor. Joining you. Hurry it up. Doctor, have you inside, joining you. Where you been, wingman? Shaking off a bandit, then clobbering him. Oh, got yourself a big mig, Lucky. Affirmative, buddy. All right, knock off the chatter. Here they come again. There's a mig coming in on your tail, Doctor. Turning into him. Turning with you. Wow! And as the firing mig flashes past, you turn to look at Summers, who'd been protecting your tail. In time to see another mig pulling up in a steep recovery from a run, a firing pass that ripped off half of Summers' wing. Summers, how bad is it? Can't you see? I only got half a right wing. Can you stay with it? Not very long, buddy. You okay? Can you jump? I'm okay, but I don't jump here. Not into a prison camp. All right, trim her up the best you can and point south while I check my map. Roger, doctor. I've already got as much left rudder as I can hold to compensate for the wing. All right, keep your head swiveling and your eyes open. You're easy meat to these MiGs now, buddy. Oh, Roger, Roger, Roger. As far as I can figure, we're not too far from the bomb line. You stay up till we get over our lines? I'm losing altitude steadily, but I think I can make it if a MiG doesn't have other ideas. Well, I'll run you interference, boy. You got enough fuel to stick with me? Oh, toxin fuel, fat with it. Don't kid me. My fuel counter says you ought to return to base. I can handle myself. Now look, you got a wingman now to keep the big bad MiGs from picking on you. Toxin fuel. Phooey. You gonna need help? Company? Plenty. Three o'clock high. Toxin bandits. <laughs> Jerk your head up and there they are. Four slim MiGs jockeying for position to start their runs. This should be cold meat for them. One limping saber with only you to protect him. Summers, can you turn into them when they make their runs? Negative, she'll spin. Well, then hold your course. I'll do the turning. Cardinal rule for fighter pilots. Always turn into your attacker. Don't let him get on your tail. But Summers can't turn, so it's up to you. You have to always be between Summers and the MiGs and turn into each pass they make. The hair on the back of your neck bristles, and suddenly you know what it is to be the hunted, the target. And then it starts. Here they come, Doctor! Dive! As Summers dives, you turn into the first MiG, meeting him head on. For a breathless instant, you face each other, his nose winking brightly as he lobs cannon shells at you, your 50s pouring into him. And then he flashes over you, big and ugly. But now his lagging wingman flits into your gun sight for only a moment, and you fire a burst, turning sharply to lead him and pieces of metal spray from his plane before he's gone. You nailed him! You nailed him! 
How fast? Damn it, she won't be back. But you have no time for elation as you scream in a tight, whistling turn into the next MiG and the next, firing when they flash through your gun sight, swiveling your head frantically, trying desperately to keep those four MiGs off Summers and off your tail. And then a MiG stands big and fat in your sight, thinking he's got a clear shot at Summers, not knowing you're on his tail. So you pour your 50s into him. And he begins smoking, and then a brilliant blast scatters him all over the sky. You pull up into his wingman and fire again while on your back in a roaring turn. And suddenly it's all over, and there isn't another plane in the sky, except Summers down below. They gone, Summers? Yeah. They gone, big brother. You see any go down? I saw one go in. Well, there's a probable flash. Two chickened out finally. Oh, good. I'm about out of ammo. So you join up on Summers again, feeling like you've just gone ten rounds against a team of Dempseys. Your gloved palms wet pools of hate and fear. Icy sweat stinging your eyes, clamming the flight suit against your heaving sides. Your mouth tasting of pennies. You're completely whipped. And you're still hundreds of miles from home. Hey, Doctor, isn't that the bomb line below? Yeah, looks like. We made it. Uh, no sweat, I told you. Man, South Korea never looked so good. Look, Summers, we're at 12,000 now. If we get to 5,000, make a slight bank and bail out, but fast. Hey, you know, maybe I could take this baby in. With half I... a wing gone, you'd clobber yourself. Could be done. You bail out, boy. Roger, Doctor. You're the doctor. Once you're down safely, I'll call a helicopter for you. Good deal. 5,000. You ready? I'm ready as I'll ever be. Okay, out you go. Aim for that clearing. Roger. See you around campus, buddy. Punch drunk. This is Dr. Leader. Four entered, one returning. Two already returned. Is that right, Doctor? Repeat, two already returned. Is that correct? Affirmative, punch drunk. Have a man down south of bomb line. Can you get a helicopter to him? Roger, Doctor. Have a chopper in vicinity. What are your coordinates? Wait a minute, let me see. Ah, uh, Obo Baker 5918. Got it? Obo Baker 5918. Roger, Doctor. Returning to Pigeon now, punch drunk. Roger, Doctor. And out. Returning out of base, if you're lucky. Your fuel counter shows you couldn't fly more than five minutes, and you've got several hundred miles to go. So what do you do? You make a decision. It'll be tricky, but maybe. First, climb up to where you don't eat fuel up so fast. Climb 40,000 feet. Now a little faster arithmetic. Rate of fuel consumption, distance to travel, amount of fuel left, altitude. And the answer always comes out the same. Not enough fuel. If you want to have power to land with, you've got to do without power now. More arithmetic. And here's an answer you like. Without power, you can glide maybe a hundred miles, then start your engine and land with power. Simple. Well, it might be done. So you cut your switch. The quiet is eerie. You pop your stick forward slightly, pushing the nose down. Now you're committed to the arithmetic that your life is dependent upon. Somewhere off on the horizon is your field. You're high now, but your altimeter hand is turning counterclockwise relentlessly as you steadily lose altitude in your desperate glide. And then suddenly, too suddenly, you're at 8,000 feet. Time for an air start, now or never. You flip your air start switch, and the engine sings. You check your instruments, then cut in your fuel. The spark is there, will it fire? Now, 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 before you lose any more altitude. And it does catch, slamming you back in your seat with its sudden power. And you climb again to conserve fuel. Ahead, you can see the field. But in your cockpit, the fuel counter says you only have 10 gallons, barely enough for a landing. Tower, this is Doctor. Emergency. Low on fuel. Request straight in approach. Over. Cleared for straight in. Landing runway 17, over. Ten miles from touchdown now. It's going to be close. Roger, Doctor. We're standing by. You better clear the... Mayday. Tower, Mayday. I'm dry. Engine just cut out. Cleared for immediate pancake. Have you inside? Roger, Tower. Alert trash crew. 
All aircraft in vicinity, emergency. Field is closed. <laughs> Prettiest dead stick I ever saw, Stace. Oh, Jeff, I was sure I undershot it. Skillful execution, as the old man would say. Well, I still say one dead stick landing is one too many. Big day for you, buddy. Yeah? Successful air start and dead stick landing, two MiGs and a probable. Well, it looks like I'm not the only one to nail a MiG. I never saw a Miss Hall so happy. Yeah, big day for everyone. <laughs> the squadron, the group, the wing. The fighter bomber boys plastered that field, and we took care of the MiGs. An unqualified success, says the old man. Seen Summer Stace? Oh, 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 hello, Steiner. No, no, last, uh, last time I saw him, he was sitting on a rock this side of the bomb line. Someone says he's back. Hey, there he is, bouncing into the mess hole now. <laughs> well, I thought I told you to stay on my uh, uh, wing. You old beat-up major, you. How'd you get back? Plus DF-86 and his beautiful glide ratio. Yeah, well, you know that helicopter you uh, got just delivered me. Yeah. Those choppers aren't bad, considering they got no wing. Well, last time I saw you, boy, you were missing half a wing. Hey, boys, boys, let me clue you about the Major. What's up? Wasn't for him, I wouldn't be here. Shot down two big mix, he did, and chased the others away that were picking on poor little defenseless me. <laughs> yes, he did, and he knew all the time he didn't have the fuel to afford to stay with me. <laughs> eh, what a boy. Oh, uh, boy. When I tell a wingman to stick with me, I see that he sticks. Oh, that's <laughs> the ungarbled word for sure. <laughs> couple of really lucky boys. Oh, you know, with our luck, Summers, we ought to find ourselves a poker game. I'm with you, buddy, all the way. Hey, what is this? I thought you didn't like the Major. Yeah, you and Stace, you had no use for each other. Are you kidding? Stace is my buddy. That's a straight poop. Why, he's an old pro. <laughs> Young man, if you've had two years of college, are single and otherwise qualified, there's a future for you as an aviation cadet in the U.S. Air Force. You'll receive 18 months of the world's finest flight training, fly the latest jets easily and safely, and graduate as an Air Force lieutenant with earnings of more than $5,000 a year. The aviation cadets of today will be the leaders of the jet age. Be one of them. Visit your nearest United States Army and United States Air Force recruiting station today. This has been another program on Proudly We Hail, presented transcribed in cooperation with this station. Proudly We Hail is produced by the Recruiting Publicity Center for the United States Army and United States Air Force Recruiting Service. This is Kenneth Banghart speaking and inviting you to tune in the same station next week for another interesting story on Proudly We Hail. Proudly We Hail.